to try and smoke again to aim. So if you have any questions about the screening broadcast, the higher level of the Oak Ridge Alliance, um, the ADR, the Colonel Eagle East Side, would like you to start. Thanks for being here today, guys. Um, we're really excited to tip off. It's the 50th season of Utah Jazz basketball. We're a little branding today. Um, gives us an opportunity to honor the teams of the past, but also celebrate um, the guys wearing the Jazz jersey this year. And uh, it's an exciting time to be part of this organization, part of this community. Um, as, as Derek said, you know, Ryan will have way more information on the Jazz streaming, but I'm really excited about that, uh, being able to deliver our product to more fans across the state of Utah. We'll have a lot of cool content coming out uh, with Jazz Plus, and um, I know Coach and I are just really excited to get started. Yeah, I think for me, similar to things that we've talked about in the past, um, every team is a its own entity, and our goal as a staff is to try to figure out how this group best fits together. There will be conversations about building on last year or building towards the future, but our focus remains on this group. We have some new pieces. We have some players in new roles. Um, and it's our job to try to look at the team as, as something that doesn't have a, a ton of history to it. Um, we're going to try to take this team at face value and try to put something on the floor every night that represents this community and this fan base. And like I promised you last year, I promise this team will play hard and we'll compete every single night. And we're going to be flexible in how we think about the team and who fits together. And, um, you know, that's our job as a staff to try to to find the right balance of, of guys on the floor every night. So we're excited to get going. Um, I know not all of you will be able to be at the first week of training camp, but um, it's going to be an exciting time for our group to spend some time together out of market, um, and we look forward to getting back here. Questions? Hey, Coach, when you look at last year's team, it feels like maybe going into the season there was a, there was a lot of we need to kind of just see what we have on the floor with so many new guys and so much turnover on the roster. How would you compare kind of the philosophy of how you're going to look at this season compared to last year? I mean, every year is different, as Will has said, Sarah. Um, I still think you can – we still need to get to know this team too. I mean, while we have a little bit of continuity with some players returning on our roster, as coaches said, there are going to be different combinations and how guys fit and the responsibilities of their roles changing. Uh, you know, you saw that throughout the year last year, but this year, you know, every year again is different. So how that pace goes, I just know that we're going to try to be as flexible as possible, uh, try to play as many combinations and, and give the coaching staff time and this team time to get to know each other and what works best. And so won't we'll put a timeline on it other than we're going to constantly explore, you know, the level of our team while competing every night, playing hard and trying to play together. It, it always takes some time for teams to gel and especially this team too with uh, the new roles and the new players that we have and how they fit. Well, how has this lead up to the season been different than your first season? Yeah, it's been a very different summer for me um, personally, not having to move. It doesn't matter how good the reason is, moving is not fun. Um, so it's been a little bit more stable kind of on a personal level with my wife and my kids. I think we've actually gotten to spend some time together this summer and uh, enjoy being in Utah and kind of being in one place and not moving. Professionally, um, I can't explain to you the difference in how I feel today, my heart rate today, relative to the last time I did this with you guys. Um, there's something about familiarity that brings you some calm. At this point last year, I was still learning people's names that worked in our organization. I was still developing relationships, not just with the players and the staff, but the medical team, uh, our PR group that I work with every day, Justin, you know, there's – the relationships are at a whole different level. Um, and so I feel like going into this season, there's 
a lot less of the sort of get to know you type of conversations and the, the foundational pieces of trust. Um, I feel like we have built that foundation of trust throughout the organization. Um, and so the level of like candor right now relative to last year is very different. Um, I think for me, again, professionally understanding kind of the rhythm of the season and even just what my day to day will look and feel like is something that, that makes me a little bit calmer than I was last year. Um, but the excitement is still the same. Like I'm itching to go. This has been a very long off season. And I know that I can speak for our staff and our players. Everybody's ready to, to get going. Um, we're glad that the open gym phase is over and that we can actually get to work. Is there What do you mean by tangible? Like, a, like, do we have like a team goal? Like, you know, make, do you, if you make a plan or you make the playoffs, is that a step forward for you guys? What does a step forward for you guys look like this year? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure that we've talked about like a, a, a checkpoint that we're trying to get to. But, you know, I, I want to be clear that we're, while we say we want to figure out what this group is and we're trying to figure out the best path forward and who fits together, that doesn't mean that we're not trying to win every night. Um, you know, we're going to come at this season like we did last year with a really high competitive spirit and we're trying to, to win every night. Um, whether that results in us making the playoffs, the play in, so on and so forth, we'll, we'll find out. We've got to remain healthy and we've got to have some guys play well and I need to coach better and um, all those things have to happen. But there isn't a you know, line that we've set to say, like, this would be a success this year and anything short of that would be a failure. Well, well, the last, you know, at the end of the, the end of the year press conference, I think you talked about watching the playoffs are a great indicator of, like, what's working and what's not in the league. So this is – what did you see anything in the playoffs this year that you plan to try to implement on, on the team this year and how they play? I mean, the game slows down tremendously. Um the types of shots you're able to generate offensively changes in the playoffs. I think especially from the three point line. Um, so there's, there's a balance as a staff of trying to play a style that, you know, wins in the regular season versus trying to have your team play in a way that not only can win in the regular season, but is adjustable and can ultimately win when you get to the playoffs and playoff series. Um, I think that's something that we have to all always keep in the back of our minds is that as we build towards the ultimate goal of winning a championship here in Utah, we have to try to work on and establish habits that can win when you get to that stage. Um, I think it's always eye-opening to watch the playoffs because you – you see that certain parts of the regular season are really stripped away. Um, so yeah, we our staff watched the playoffs a ton. We watched a lot together. Um, there's a lot that can be learned from teams that are you know in a situation that we would like to be in. Can you kind of introduce the new coaches to us and you know kind of go down the line and tell us who they are, kind of what they bring individually and collectively to, to the staff? Sure. Um, I'll start on the front of the bench. Um, you guys know Lamar Skeeter. Scott Morrison was our G League head coach last year, has been an NBA assistant, worked for Brad Stevens in Boston, um, but has also done a ton internationally working with Team Canada. Um, he is Canadian um, p from PEI, big oyster guy. Um, and he's coached college, he's coached pro, he coached in Australia. He is a brilliant um, tactician, a uh, great offensive mind and for me gives me a ton of resource as somebody that's been a head coach has been in a lot of different scenarios as a head coach um, and he's somebody that I'm going to lean on a ton I think he the value that he brought to our organization last year as the head coach of our G League team you know a lot of you probably wouldn't get to see because 
a lot of the stuff that he was doing for me was behind closed doors. Um, but he was at – anytime they were in town, he was at our home games. He was in the back. He was a part of our coaches' meetings. Like, Scott, to me, has been a part of our staff since I got here. Um, now we're just sort of formalizing that. Um, Jason Terry will be moved to the bench. Um, w our only hope with Jet is that he doesn't get a technical this year. Um, but his experience speaks for itself. He's incredibly bright, unbelievable personality, charismatic, um, has a great presence with the team. And, you know, for me, he has experiences that I will never have. I don't care how much I empathize with players or research it. Um, he sat in an NBA locker room for 20 years. And so, you know, Jet makes comments to me either in front of the group or on the side um, about the way the team may be feeling or how certain messages may land with the team. And so his, uh, his value far, you know, exceeds just the X's and O's part, which he knows cold. Um, behind the bench, we've added Chad Forcier. Um, Chad was an assistant coach in San Antonio when I started there as an intern. I think this is year 26 for Chad in the NBA. Has worked for, you know, George Carl, Rick Carlisle, Coach Pop, he was most recently with the Bucks and Coach Bud. Um, has an unbelievable perspective on the NBA. Has seen so many different situations over 26 years. Gives me a ton of insight. Um, he's more of a big picture thinker for us. Has a tremendous player development background. Obviously the, the phase that our team is in, adding three rookies and even guys like Walker and Ochai who are younger, Colin is still young, Talon's still young, Lowry's still young. Um, you know, he's, he's going to do a, as much helping me as he will do helping our staff and our, some of our younger assistants in terms of their process and teaching some of these things on the floor. Um, so Chad is going to be vital to our staff this year and, and to me um, obviously gives me a comfort level with our personal relationship. Rick Higgins uh, was most recently an assistant with uh, the Houston Rockets, has worked for Steve Clifford in the past, uh, super bright coach on both sides of the ball, um, very detail oriented and will do a great job with the players on the court as well. Um, has worked with some younger teams. And again, that's I like having a staff that can give their energy on the floor. Um, that's where we are as a team. That's what we need. And Rick fits and adds to our group, you know, both personally and on the floor. And then Mike Williams um, was most recently the head coach of the Go-Go, uh, Washington's G League team. He was the youngest coach in the G League. He was their head coach for two years. Um, Mike is probably the most serious person we have on the staff outside of uh, Sean Sheldon. And very deep thinker, incredibly bright, um, thoughtful. And again, I can learn things from Mike. He was a head coach for two years. And so there are some concepts when you move over from being an assistant to a head coach that Things made sense when you were an assistant, and now you're a head coach, and you have to think about things differently. So not only is Mike capable of helping tactically and on the floor from a player development standpoint, but he's somebody else that I have already leaned on in terms of bouncing more big picture team type of concepts off of. So um, we've got a really, really bright staff. And the energy that they've had all summer, the energy in our gym every day is a credit to them. Um, to this point, I have not spoken to the team this summer. I have individual conversations with guys all the time, but it's not time for me to coach them as a group yet. And our staff has run an incredible program this summer in terms of setting guys up for workouts and going to visit them and having people in our gym. So um, we're lucky. We're lucky that we have a, an energetic, hungry staff um, that I also happen to think is incredibly bright. You, you talked about. Did I miss anybody? So I'm sorry. Did I miss anybody? That would have been incredibly rude to miss someone. <laughs> All right. Sorry. You, you talked about having more familiarity coming into this season than last season. And that obviously extends to some of the players that are coming back. Have you got a chance to see them in action and coach them through the entire season? How much does that influence what you do in, in terms of evaluating this year's group and, and player development? 
I mean, having that baseline is very important to me. I feel like the level of honesty that I'm able to have with the players on day one is different because they understand that my feedback to them is not personal in terms of I care about them as people, as players. We've built a baseline level of trust. I think for me, I have to sort of reset my brain a little bit to start the year and not have preconceived notions or bias based on things that happened last year because we have new pieces added to the context. You know, like take Lowry and Walker, for example. I think what I think of those two people, but everything I think about them is based on them playing a lot with Kelly Olynyk. They're both going to play a lot with John Collins this year, and so I have to think about them a little bit differently, and I have to be flexible in what I'm willing to do or try with them in order to make that three-person group of Lowry, John, and Walker work to the best of their abilities. Um, I can't center it around John, and I also can't just center it around those two and just say, John, just figure it out as you go. That, uh, that's not my job. My job is to make those three guys work well together. So <clears throat> history informs you of certain things. I, I'm not going to totally try to abandon anything that I think of those guys, but I have to scale back my bias to start the year because I think right now, probably everybody in this room, you guys all watch our team a ton, you guys all probably have pretty strong opinions about certain players on our roster. And that's okay and healthy in one way, and also it's limiting in another way because we don't, we may be not seeing a few possibilities that could pop up. Um, so that's what training camp's for. You know, it's not a, it's not a chemistry lab, like we're not just doing experiments, we're trying to win, but there is some tinkering that goes on as we go through the early part of the season. I guess kind of along those lines, you mentioned a couple of times now, guys being in new roles. Mm -hmm. Does, who, who are you talking about and what kind of new roles do you see guys needing to move into? Yeah, I think we'll start with the guards. They're all in a new role in terms of the expectation of their understanding of what's going on on the floor. I think last year, you know, to begin the year, Mike was an incredible resource for me. He was also a little bit of a crutch for the team because Mike did a lot of the thinking for everybody. And we need to all take our level up a little bit in terms of understanding the situations of the game, time score, who's got the hot hand, all those types of things. And not, it's not putting it on one person. Um, I'm not going to ask one person to make all the decisions on the court. We're going to continue to play as a group. Um, Lowry. You know, he's a leader now, and you don't always ask to be the leader. Lowry's an introvert. You guys know him, um, and I think he's ready for that role. But it's something that he and I have spoken a lot about this summer is understanding that people are looking at you even when you don't want them to be looking at you. And so how you react to different situations in a game, after a game, at practice, in a film session, it matters to the team. And he's getting used to sort of carrying that weight. Um, it's something that I can very much empathize with. I'm not used to everybody looking at me still after a year. And it's still a little bit odd to sit up here and have you guys all looking at me and asking me questions, but I'm getting used to it. Um, Walker, Ochai, those guys, it's, it's now about, you know, reliability. It's, it's great that you had a good rookie year and for, you know, Walker more than Ochai, but it wasn't like you had a great whole year it was you know we all remember the last sort of 30 games and that's amazing and we want to, them to continue on that trend but being an every night contributor in the NBA is hard that's why what the best players do is so amazing it's 82 nights of them just bringing it and being the best player on the floor so you know those guys it's about reliability and then you know John he doesn't know what his role is I don't know what his role is yet we're still going to try to figure that out I think he's an incredibly talented player. I think he's got really good instincts on the court, um, but we're going to have to sort of free him up and adjust him into our style and playing with these players. Um, so yeah, there's, there's different roles for a lot of people. And as you can tell by what I said, a lot of those roles aren't necessarily the shots you're taking or the plays you're making. It's how you fit in the ecosystem of a team. Um, you know, Jordan, I don't know what his role is going to be either. You know, I know that we expect Jordan to continue to
be a leader on our team and, and somebody that we can rely on every night. You know, does he start? Does he come off the bench? Does he? Uh, we're going to figure out what groups work best together. Well, you shared last year at this point, you shared later, that this, you were scared that like, there was so much open time that the guys were going to go to the training camp and just kind of eat each other alive, and instead they bonded. Yes. Do you have a concern going into this year, or maybe concern slash curiosity about the way this thing this year? And similar, sim same question to Justin. Uh, it's... I would say at this point it's less of a concern. I think I sort of know what training camp's going to look like, and I would describe it as the Hunger Games. It's going to be vicious, and I am excited about that. It's my job to make sure that that all stays within a team construct. But when you look at just the guards, there are a lot of factors that are going to go into all those guys really, really competing to try to earn those minutes because not everybody can play every night. Um, you know, I think we showed as a staff last year and we will show again this year that nothing is set in stone. We could be the team that changes the starting lineup, you know, once every 10 days just based on a matchup. Um, if we can get our team to think about that as something that's okay, then that's going to be great for us. I think it's a strength. Who's going to play at the end of the game? Uh, we'll do what makes sense in the game. I think we tried to do that to the best of our ability last year, and the team bought into it. But, you know, Colin, Talon, Chris, Jordan, I haven't even mentioned Keontae yet. Like, those five guys are going to go at it at training camp, and I love that. But, um, again, we've got to make sure that it's within a team construct and that individual motives are good and powerful, and we need to lean into those. But we also have to remember that we have 82 games coming and that we're all wearing the same jersey. Yeah, I would, <clears throat> I would echo a lot of what Will said. I, I do, especially with the guards, but the entire group, the, the character of the group is really high. Um, I think the foundation that Will and his staff have set and that we have set of the types of people that we've brought in here um, to be in a competitive environment. But... Um, so I'm really excited to see how training camp plays out. I, I would say it's not all going to be figured out right after training camp. To Will's point, you know, there's 82 games, and there's so many things that can change during a season. You've, you've seen that over the last couple of years with our team, whether it's personnel or playing time or injuries and those things. So when I speak about the character of the group, that collective resolve for them to compete with each other um, against other teams, compete for minutes, continually to try to improve and develop. Uh, that's a that's a season long thing. It's not just training camp. Training camp's the beginning of it for us to kind of figure out initially what you know who's going to be in what role and see where that works. And then the whole team knowing culturally that there has to be a culture of flexibility and understand that we're as a collective group trying to win every game and compete and some days that's going to be a particular set of eight or nine players and another game it may be a different set of eight or nine players and them continuing on that journey and being connected together I think will be my biggest hope for the group and because of the character of the group I think that'll happen. For both of you guys, uh, where are the rookies right now? I guess first of all health-wise with Bryce and Clay and uh, just kind of in their readiness and what you've seen from them uh, as, as we get into training camp. Are they ready to kind of contribute at the NBA level? Um, you know, for a team? There you go. Uh, yeah, the, they're all healthy, which is the best news coming out of the summer. They've all been participating on the floor. In terms of their readiness, you know, you guys have obviously seen Keontae, and you haven't seen the other two. I think the other two are very, very good young players as well. Um, but this is for Keontae and for the other two, like this isn't summer league. And if they come and they have a good camp and they look like they're ready to help the team, then that's where we'll go. And if not, we'll use the resources we have available to try to help them get ready as quickly as possible. You know, all three of them are 19 years old. I think the biggest thing for those three players in training camp is not about me or Justin and what we think of them. It's about earning the trust of their teammates because if their teammates think that they can help them win, 
they'll be all about it. If their teammates feel like they're being sort of shoved down their throats by myself or Justin, then we have an issue. Um, the three of them are all incredibly high character. They go at it. They have not backed down for one second out here playing with our guys, um, our, our veteran guys. They are our guys also. Um, and so training camp's going to show us a lot because it's, it is a very different environment. It's very different than summer league. It's very different than open gym. And so it's very different than college. Well, that for sure. <laughs> um, but I think there is a world where each of them could play themselves into minutes. And I think there's a world where that we have veteran guys ahead of them that they show that the veteran guys deserve the minutes to start the season. Um, but I could not be more excited about each of those guys individually and collectively sort of what they represent for our program going forward. Yeah, I'll just, real quick, I'm just very happy about the credit to our health performance staff um, and individually with Taylor and Bryce and Keontae, they're, they're extremely hard workers. They've all been here basically all summer. Um, we've even tried to kick them out of the gym. They keep coming back. Um, so they're, what we thought about them as far as their character, their work ethic, and let alone their talent, I'm excited to have them start their journey. What kind of stuff does it take in a training camp for a guy to change his position relative to minutes or like how much time do we get or anything like that at the beginning of the season? Like what, what would it take for you to see during training camp? You're like, okay, let's... Yeah, I think number one is being able to accept where you are in the food chain. Um, are you the best player in the group you're playing with? How do you help the group you're playing with? Because again, 95% of the guys in the NBA have been the best player in every game they've ever played in until they get to the NBA. And it takes an adjustment to then step into a quote unquote role. Um, so I think number one, making sure that a guy is not sort of going rogue or trying to prove that they are X and trying to play within the team. That doesn't mean don't shoot. That doesn't mean don't look at the basket. It just means the game's not built around you. You know, defensively, the physicality part is always a concern with 19-year-old players. Um, you know, how are they going to hold up to the bumps and the bruises and all those things in a game? Can they deal with failure? Can they deal with getting their shot blocked or a couple bad plays in a row or getting exposed on the defensive end and like keep pushing? Um, but yeah, to me, mostly it's about just the fit with the other guys. Um, you know, I, I feel like I'm going out on a limb here, but I'm pretty sure Lowry's going to play a lot this year. That's fair. And so fair. those guys playing with Lowry, playing with Walker, assuming he has a good camp, he'll play also. Like, how do you fit with those guys that are already established on our team? That's as important as anything. Um, so it's uh, it's not one thing. It's not a pass-fail, like, oh, he messed up that one possession. Like, get him out of there. That's not how I coach. That's not how we operate. But, um, you know, there there is a, a fit piece that's – that's ultimately going to be the most important. You mentioned training camp uh, being vicious this week, kind of be like the Hunger Games. How many cat is every games you think are on this? <laughs> <laughs> I did this to myself. It's <laughs> uh, a really good question. Who's volunteering uh, who, for tribute? Who would be Katniss Everdeen on our team? That's a really good question. That's maybe the best question I've been asked in a long time. I would say I'm going to go with Kelly. I'm going to go with Kelly. Kelly has a way of fitting in with everybody. Kelly's a, yeah, I'm going Kelly. So we have one. <laughs> I'm sure the other guys will be offended, but like, yeah, I don't know. Are you possibly willing to kill everyone else in the room, but take the high road against 
Yeah, but like you don't think that when he walks in, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's a step back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Is anybody physically considerably different than they were when we last saw them? Um, I don't know, significantly different. We've got... Anybody had a particularly good off-season training? I, frankly, I think all of them have. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to just, like, gloss over it. It's just, again, I give a lot of credit to our health performance guys and the buy-in of our players. Um, part of that is we have a pretty young team, and so there's going to be natural development as you just get older. So you guys may think Walker looks bigger and put on, you know, put on some strength and weight and Ochai and Talon. I mean, they're, they're all in really good shape. Um, I don't have really any health concerns right now as we start camp, which is always a great thing to open up healthy and in shape and and a collective buy-in, again, of, of our group of being here and getting to know each other early before we start camp. So I think they all look good. Coach, you uh, traveled a little bit this Mm -hmm. watch the guys play in FIBA. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me what lens do you, like, through what lens do you watch those games? And then how does that prepare you for the season? Yeah, f so watching those games is bizarre for me because it's maybe the only basketball games that I watch where I, I'm, I'm rooting for our guys and I would like for them to win but I really don't have a stake in the game and it's a very unemotional experience for me. Um, I'm their number one to support them, to let them know and show them that their things that are important to them are also important to us. Um, playing for your country is an incredible honor. And so to be there, um, and support them as number one. Number two, I, I look at it as an opportunity to learn a little bit, you know, maybe based on the role they have with their national team, that could be different than the role they played for us or in the NBA. I mean, the best example was last summer after we traded for Lowry, getting to watch him with his national team. I'm sitting there watching on film going, he doesn't do any of that in the NBA. And it's not because he can, it's because he's never been allowed to try. Um, and that's no knock on anybody else. That's just the context of the teams that he was on. And for our team, it made sense to give him those opportunities. So you see certain things in a game um, that could you know, trigger a thought and say, hey, maybe we should try that with him. Oh, he's better at that than I thought. Um, but yeah, mostly it's about going there, spending time with them away from here, away from the stress of our season, having dinner with them, supporting them. Um, but the basketball piece, you can you can always pick up one or two things watching the guys play. Strategy, tactical, you know, kind of what you want to do on the court for next season. Uh, what do you want to emphasize that was you know, kind of similar to what you did last year? And are there any new wrinkles that you want to add uh, to, to what you do as a team? Yeah, the, the thing that we want to maintain, first of all, is that it's a team sport. And everybody's involved in the game. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't go to your best players when it's time to go to your best players and that Lowry isn't featured more than somebody else, but we never want to set the game up around one player. Um, and that, again, is partially through the lens of Locke's question earlier about being adjustable and flexible as you get to a, a different place. Um, as far as wrinkles, I'm not sure if I'd call them wrinkles yet. It's more about you know, we're going to have to adjust maybe some spacing thoughts as it relates to Walker and John playing together. That may look different. Um, I think areas that may look similar to all of you would be moments in the game where we may have Lowry, Kelly, and John, with John sort of in that role that Vando played last year where he's the roller. Um, that may look more familiar to you guys and us from last year, but um, – you know, from a, a tactic standpoint, you know, a lot of my thinking now is centered around two things. One, incorporating John into the group and how does it change when he plays with Walker? And then secondly, trying to view the backcourt where, as a backcourt. Last year, when Mike was here to start the year, it was pretty clear that Mike was our point guard. 
this year I think we have a lot of really good guards, and I don't want to say you're the point guard and you're the two. I don't think that fits our group best. It's more about viewing them as pairs, which pairs play well together as a pair, which pairs play well with the other three guys, and you know how does that change our thinking in terms of offensive style when I'm not relying on one person to bring it up each time and sort of initiate what we're doing. That flexibility is going to be an adjustment for us um, because so much of last year was built early in the season on Mike being the person that started the action. Um, we're going to have to get away from that a little bit. It's a little bit going back in time. You know, it used to be backcourts, and now it's we've turned into one guy dribbles a lot and the other guy spaces a lot. Um, so it's going to be fun. You, you talked a little bit about the youth of the group. And most of your players are still young and then early in their careers in terms of their development. With that in mind, how important was it to, to bring in a guy like John Collins, who's been in the league for a few years, to bring back Jordan Clarkson, and, you know, to have a guy like Kelly Olynyk there and Walker? I mean, the mix of characters. He brought John here. Yeah. So that's him. <laughs> I think the character... <laughs> Um, of our group, and I know I've repeated that a lot. John adds a different element. You know, he's a, a young veteran. I mean, he's in the prime of his career. Him and Lowry are about the same age. Um, he's seen a different perspective. Um, he's got a unique voice, which I think is needed in our locker room as we do have a growing group. Um, so he's fit in great so far, and I think as the season and everyone, we figure out the roles, he's going to be a uh, He'll be an important voice in our locker room. Kelly has always been and will continue to do that along with Jordan. So anytime you can add, you know, great people who've been around a little bit and obviously can still play at a very, very high level, um, they're all in their, you know, entering their prime or in their prime of their careers. Uh, that's a huge bonus for our, the rest of our young group to lean on and look at and, and also help Lowry um, as he continues to develop as a leader. I think the last thing I would add is that John's played in playoff games. He's been to the conference final. Like That experience of understanding what it takes to get there, what it feels like to have a team get to that level, I think is big for our locker room. Um, John will add a perspective to the younger players of it's not about this, it's about getting to there because he's actually been there. Um, and we have a team that doesn't necessarily have a ton of experience getting to that stage of the playoffs. So um, his perspective for that, I think, is going to be really big for the team. Justin, I know that you've got some guys on the roster that are not guaranteed, and I'm sure the training camp is going to play a certain part in that. Is, are you wanting to go into the season with an open roster spot, or is that up in the air? No, I, th I think we're, op I mean, we're open. Um, you know, Chris and, and Luca have. Um, you know, had really good contributions last year in a short period of time. Um, they've integrated the group. Obviously, the you know, contract structure is what it is. Um, but we're going in with an open mind of how, how guys play in training camp and how those things are. From a flexibility standpoint, it's not a need. It's not a priority. We can go in with 15 guys. We can go in with three two ways and, and see how that goes. Um, there's not really any financial impact. It's more about their impact on the floor and the team together. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate nice it. Guys.